Hello and welcome to this lecture. In the previous lecture you learned how to insert a new node in between two other nodes of a singly linked list and in this lecture you will learn its Python implementation. We have our file from the previous programming exercise which is named singly linked list.py and let's add a new method to our linked list class to achieve this. I have added two nodes to this singly linked list. The first node has the data 10 and the second node has the data 20. Let's just insert integer type data this time. So let's print this list to see how our output looks like. So that would be Python 3 if you're on Mac or Linux and PY if you are on Windows. Space the file name which is singly linked list.py and we see our output as 10 and 20. So what we're trying to do now is to insert a new node which will have the data 15 so that 15 goes in between 10 and 20. So your head node will be 10 10, the next of 10 will point to 15 and the next of 15 will point to 20. Let's see how to do that. So let's create a third node. Let me just name it as third node and let's assign it with the value 15, the data part of it. And then let's have a new method in our linked list class. Let's call this method as insert at, which means to say you're inserting at a particular position and we'll pass the third node. And along with the node, this time we will also pass the position at which it is to be inserted at. So the position which I will be passing is 1. So our head node is at position 0 and we want 15 to be after the head node which will be at position 1. So let's go back to our linked list class and have a new method for it. So that's define insert at and it accepts the new node as well as the position. So this is how our linked list now looks like. We have the head node which is 10 and 10 points to 20 and 20 points to none. And the new node which we are trying to insert is the node with the data 15 and the next of 15 is none. And in position what we have is the value 1. So what we want to do here is to traverse the list till we reach position 1 and at that position we insert our new node. So let's traverse the list. Let me make use of a temporary node. Let me call this as current node which starts from the head node. And I will also be making use of another variable called current position which will be used to keep track of the current position of our traversal. So initially we are starting from the head node so the position is 0. Now in each iteration of our while loop, we want to check if this current position is equal to the position which is being passed on. So let's do that. So if your current position is equal to the position which is being passed on, then we need to perform some operations. Now initially the value at current position is 0 and the value at position is 1. So this will return false. So let's skip this for now and then come back to it later. Now if the if condition does not get executed, then we need to advance to the next node. So let's advance that. It will be current node equal to current node dot next. So initially your current node was at 10 and now your current node is at 20. And when your current node is at 20, we should also advance the position. So that would be current position plus equal to 1. So now the value of your current position is 1. Initially it was 0 and now it is 1. Now next time when the while loop repeats, the current position has the value 1 and that's equal to the position which we had passed on as the parameter. So at this position we need to insert our new node. Let's do that. So what needs to be done now is the next of 10 needs to point to 15. But now if you take a look at the current node, it was initially 10 but it is now 20. Which means we have lost the access to the node with the data 10. So we no longer have access to the next of 10. So before we advance to the next node, we need to store the details of the previous node. So in order to do that, previous node will be your current node. So in the first iteration, your current node is at 10. So before you advance 20, you're storing the details of 10 and 20. And then when it is equal, all that you need to do is your previous node, which is the node with the data 10, the next of 10 will point to your new node and the next of your new node will point to your current node, which is the node with the data 20. And now that we have inserted the new node at that position, we no longer need to continue this iteration and we can break this while loop. So that's it. Let's now execute this program and see if it works as expected. I seem to have made a typo here. It is P-O-S-I-T-I-O-N. All right. So now before we execute this program, let's remove the print list from here and have it after insertion of the third node. So now let's save this one and then open our terminal and then execute it. So now you see that 15 has been inserted in between 10 and 20. 
So now let's try another case. What if the position which is being passed was not one but zero, which means you're trying to insert something at the head node. So we saw earlier that the process to insert something at the head node is different than what you usually insert. So in our insert at program, let's first check if the position is zero. And if your position is zero, then what you need to do is call the insert head method, which we already have. So we call self dot insert head and we just pass this new node and we return from this method since we no longer have anything to do here. So we save this and then execute it. So now you see that 15 is being inserted at the head node. There is also a possibility that the user enters an invalid position. Let's say he enters minus one or he could enter a value which is greater than the length of your list. So initially the list length is two, but what if he enters a value as 10? So we need a case to handle this as well. So now, now let's go back to the insert at method and then we need to check if the position is less than zero or your position is greater than the length of the list. So we need to have a mechanism in which we find the length of the list. So let's create a new method for that. Let me call this as list length. This method returns the length of the list. And how do we return the length of the list? We traverse the linked list starting from the first node till the last. At each iteration, we count the node and in the end, we return the total count. So let's start from the first node, which is your head node. And let me have a variable called length, which is initially zero. Now we start the iteration. Now we could either do it like how we had done it till now, where we run an infinite while loop and within the while loop, we check if your current node is none, or we could also do it directly within your while loop. So you check while your current node is not none, only if your current node is not none, then you execute this while loop. So within the while loop, we increment the length and then we advance to the next node. So finally, when your current node is none, this breaks the while loop and then we can return the length. So this return length is what is being made use of here. So we call this method here, which is self dot list length. And if your position is zero or if it is greater than the length of your list, then you have a print statement which says invalid position and you return from this. So that's it. Let's now save this program and execute it to see if it works as expected. So let's open our terminal. And now when we execute our program, it needs to return as invalid position since the position which we are passing is 10. So that's Python three spacingly linked list. And we have invalid position and the list is printed as 10 and 20 with 15 not being added to the list. So that's the end of this lecture. You now have covered all the insertion part of the linked list. In the next lecture, we'll start with the deletion of nodes of a linked list and we will start with deleting the last node in a singly linked list. I'll see you there. Thank you.